Hi friends, myself Svarnamai and today I am going to read a book written by Sudha Murthy Ma'am. This is one of the most famous books written by the author. So let's start with our first chapter that is How I Taught My Grandmother to Read. When I was a girl of about 12, I used to stay in a village in North Karnataka with my grandparents. Those days the transport system was not very good. So we used to get the morning paper only in the afternoon. A weekly magazine used to come one day late. All of us would wait eagerly for the bus, which used to come with the papers, weekly magazines and the post. At that time, Triveni was a very popular writer in the Kannada language. She was a wonderful writer. Her style was easy to read and very convincing. Her stories usually dealt with complex psychological problems in the lives of ordinary people and were always interesting. Unfortunately for Kannada literature, she died very young. Even now, after 40 years, people continue to appreci appreciate her novels. One of her novels was called Kashi Yatra. It was appearing as a serial in the Kannada weekly Karma Veera then. It is the story of an old lady and her ardent desire to go to Kashi or Varanasi. Most Hindus believe that going to Kashi and worshipping Lord Vishveshwara is the ultimate punya. This old lady also believed in this and her struggle to go there was described in the novel. In the story, there was also a young orphan girl who falls in love but there was no money for the wedding. In the end, the old lady gives all her savings without going to Kashi. She says, The happiness of this orphan girl is more important than worshipping Lord Vishveshwara at Kashi. My grandmother, Krishtaka, never went to school, so she could not read. Every Wednesday, the magazine would come and I would read the next episode of this story to her. During that time, she, for, she would forget all her work and listen with the greatest concentration. Later, she could repeat the entire text by heart. My grandmother, too, never went to Kashi. And she identified herself with the novel's protagonist. So, more than anybody else, she was the one most interested in knowing what happened next in the story and used to insist that I read the serial out to her. After hearing what happened next in Kashi Yatra, she would join her friends at the temple courtyard, where we children would also gather to play hide and seek. She would discuss the latest episode with her friends. At that time, I never understood why there was so much of debate about the story. Once I went for a wedding with my cousins to the neighboring village. In those days, a wedding was a great event. We children enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. We would eat and play endlessly, savoring the freedom because all the elders were busy. I went for a couple of days but ended up staying here for a week. When I came back to my village, I saw my grandmother in tears. I was surprised for I had never seen her crying even in the most difficult situation. Oh my God, what had happened? I was worried. Ava, is everything all right? Are you okay? I used to call her Ava, which means mother in the Kannada spoken in North Karnataka. She nodded but did not reply. I did not understand and forgot about it. In the night after dinner, we were sleeping in the open terrace of the house. It was a summer night and there was a full moon. Ava came and sat next to me. Her affectionate hands touched my forehead. I realized she wanted to speak. I asked her, what is the matter? When I was a young girl, I lost my mother. There was nobody to look after and guide me. My father was a busy man and got married again. In those days, people did not consider education essential for girls. So, I never went to school. I got married very young and had children. I became very busy. Later, I had grandchildren 
and always felt so much happiness in cooking and feeding all of you. At that time, I used to regret not going to school. So, I made sure that my children and grandchildren studied well. I could not understand why my 62-year-old grandmother was telling me, a 12-year-old, the story of her life in the middle of the night. But I knew I loved her immensely and there had to be some reason why she was talking to me. I looked at her face. It was unhappy and her eyes were filled with tears. She was a good-looking lady who was usually always smiling. Even today, I cannot forget the worried expression on her face. I leaned forward and held her hand. Abba, don't cry. What's the matter? Can I help you in any way? Yes, I need your help. You know, when you were away, Karma Vira came as usual. I opened the magazine. I saw the picture that accompanies the story of Kashi Yatra and I could not understand anything that was written. Many times I rubbed my hands over the pages, wishing they could understand what was written. But I knew it was not possible. If only I was educated enough, I waited eagerly for you to return. I felt you, could, I felt you would come early and read it for me. I even thought of going to the village and asking you to read for me. I could have asked somebody in this village, but I was too embarrassed to do so. I felt so very dependent and helpless. We are well off. But what is use of money when I cannot be independent? I did not know what to answer, Abba continued. I have decided I want to learn the Kannada alphabet from tomorrow onwards. I will work very hard. I will keep Saraswati Puja day during Dasara as the deadline. That day, I should be able to read a novel on my own. I wanted to be independent. I saw the determination on her face, yet I laughed at her. Avva, at this age of 62, you want to learn the alphabet. All your hair is grey, your hands are wrinkled, you wear spectacles, and you work so much in the kitchen. Childishly, I made fun of the old lady, but she just smiled. For a good cause, if you are determined, you can overcome any obstacle. I will work harder than anybody, but I will do it. For learning, there is no age bar. The next day onwards, I started my tuition. Ava was a wonderful student. The amount of homework she did was amazing. She would read, repeat, write and recite. I was her only teacher and she was my first student. Little did I know then that one day I would become a teacher in computer science and teach hundreds of students. The Dashara festival, festival came as usual. Secretly, I bought Kashi Yatra, which had been published as a novel by that time. My grandmother called me to the puja place and made me sit down on a stool. She gave me the gift of a frock material. Then she did some unusual. She bent down and touched my feet. I was surprised and taken aback. Elders never touch the feet of young girls. I have always touched the feet of God elders and teachers. We consider that as a mark of respect. It is a great tradition, but today the reverse had happened. It was not correct. She said, I am touching the feet of a teacher, not my granddaughter, a teacher who taught me so well, with so much of affection that I can read any novel confidently in such a short period. Now, I am independent. It is my duty to respect a teacher. This, uh, is it not written in our scriptures that a teacher should be respected irrespective of gender and age? I did return Namaskara to her by touching her feet and gave my gift to for my first student. She opened it and read immediately the title Kashi Yatra by Triveni and the publisher's name. I knew that my student had passed 
with flying colors. So friends, this is all about how I thought my grandmother to read. Was it interesting? If you think that this story is interesting, please like, subscribe and share my video. Thank you.